It really, really pains me to say this, but unfortunately, physical games are starting to become somewhat of a dying breed. It's a lot easier for the consumer to download games directly on their system than have to go to the store or try to track them down even at a store or online. And it's a lot easier for the developer as well because then they don't have to try to package up their game. A lot of extra work can go into making the game physical and sometimes it isn't always worth it. But just like collecting vinyl records or reading physical books, there's definitely something special about owning physical games, whether it's taking a look through the actual physical manual or even just popping the game open and adding it to your shelf. And it's worth bringing up video game preservation as well, as if a game's never been released digitally and it just suddenly disappears off the digital online store, there may be a chance that you can never play it again. Look at games like PT, the demo for Silent Hills on the PlayStation 4, or the Scott Pilgrim video game that was available on 360 and PS3. Those games were pulled all because of legalities and just because some suit said so. And now those works of art are completely lost to the general public, unless if you had them downloaded prior because you, you purchased them. Thankfully though, plenty of larger Switch games are still getting released physically. And for some of the lesser known indie titles, there are a few publishers that are working tirelessly to make sure that the Switch's library can be played for years to come. And one of these companies is known as Super Rare Games. They've been putting out games exclusively on the Switch for the better half of a year now or so at the pace of about one a month. And as you'd expect from their company title, once these games release, they're pretty rare and pretty hard to get. They usually have a pretty short pre-order window and they usually only print about three to 5,000 copies of each game that they make. And today, we managed to get our hands on five of Super Rare's most recent releases. Now, unfortunately, none of these games are still available for order on their site right now, as they always have a limited window to order them in, like I said before. But with this, you'll at least be able to see kind of what you can expect from a game when they release it. Let's go ahead and crack it open and take a look. So we've got five games here from Super Rare, and the first one we're gonna take a look at is Machinarium, I think it's called. This game I've heard really good things about before. YouTuber Nakey Jakey, he talked about the soundtrack of this game and on, at the end of one of his videos, and I listened to it and it's like one of my favorites. It's one of my go-tos when I'm editing videos now. So it looks like they all come in this like little package here and they've got a sticker on there in the front. It's like a, it makes it feel like a booster pack almost the way that it's uh, sealed on the bottom. So you tear that open. So there's a Super Rare Games sticker in here. I think it might be themed around, oh yeah, yep, not sure how well you can see that, but it actually uses the backdrop from the box art of Machinarium. So, and I, I might be m mispronouncing that. Machinarium, I don't know. And then there's like a little pack of trading cards here too. That's pretty cool. So it looks like they're all themed around like characters from in the game. And they're nice, they have like a glossy finish on the front and then a matte on the back. I prefer like, with playing cards, I prefer if they're like matte all around, but but these are still pretty sweet. And they're numbered too on the bottom, so I'm not sure if there's like different ones that you can get for each game or if they're all the same across the board. But yeah, we have a bartender, a cat, and an, an angry lady. And then they all have like little flavor text on the bottom too, just kind of giving them a little bit more of a story. Oh, and then the other thing too is, is all these games are PAL region specific. Thankfully though, the Switch, you can play games on any region. They actually display a number on the corner here as well of what number this game is. Uh, this one's number 17. So this is the 17th game they've ever released. So this one looks like it has like a full color manual, I think in here. Um, I'm not sure if it's a manual or if it's a book. It doesn't say anything on the front. It just actually looks kind of like a Game Boy or something. What is going on in here? It's like written in a different language. And there's a bunch of pictures like explaining how to do things. Like here's one where you can see a bunch of button commands or it's just like a bunch of arrows. So I don't know if maybe if you do that in a certain area, if that solves a puzzle, I don't know. It, I think it's kind of like a little platformer like Limbo or Braid or something like that. And the other thing is all these games, even though they do run out of them on their online store, you can still download all these games on the eShop whenever you want. I mean, as long as they stick around, like we said before. So this next one we have here is Cube 2. Let's get this one cracked open. Gosh, I don't want to rip these stickers. Oh, maybe if I'm careful enough pull out the heat gun, probably melt the case right off. This feels like a little candy bag, almost. It's a bunch of goodies. So here's another sticker from Super Rare. We got some cube stickers. Probably gonna be four in here again. Oh my gosh, we're, I need scissors now? Mm, got it. So they always, it looks like they always have one that shows like the Super Rare with that sticker on there. And then the box art, that's how the Machinarium one was too. 
So one called Worlds Apart, Lost in Transmission. Oh, cool. There's just, so there's three in this one, not four, but this, I like this one a lot because this one just shows just the box art for the game. Oh yeah, and I forgot. So the UK, you guys are so cool. You have these little like tear tabs on here, but you just pull that, pull that little line along. Do all your games have those or is it just Super Rare does that? It's, it's a thing of beauty, so much easier. This game has really cool box art. Cube 2 is a sequel to the hit first person puzzle game Cube. <laughs> that makes sense. This game looks really cool. I didn't even know it existed. It looks very, I don't wanna say cyberpunky. That's that's not the right word for it, but it, it really looks neat. And then inside Cube 2, you can see there is, they have like the, the cover basically, but in red. Oh, that's actually different. Weird, that's a different person. Weird. Well, it looks sweet though. Like the, the dedication that goes into these games. Cause you'll look at some Switch games and they'll just have like, nothing in them like okay so nintendo usually does a pretty good job with their boxes like this is pokemon let's go eevee they've got a nice inside there katamari damasi reroll a game that was a 30 dollars physical release but there's there's nothing in there they're, they're probably they're, people are buying this because they want to collect it look at there's not even a game in there what the heck happened but yeah, it's just, it's really nice to see all the love and attention that's gone into these games from Super Rare. And I know there's other companies out there that do this sort of thing, but it's, it's nice, it's nice to see more because we can always use more physical Switch games, right? Keep beefing up that library. And then Cube 2, whoa, that's sweet. So Cube 2's book that's in here is more of like, it, it explains like how to play the game in here, but it has more artwork in here. This reminds me a lot of Mirror's Edge, actually, like its art style. It's really pretty. I'm doing a good job to make sure that I don't tear the sticker off this time. The collector in me has to be careful. All right, so we got another sticker, some more cards. That seems to be the standard. Whoa, sweet. I think this one has like a slipcover or something. It does. That's cool. And the slipcover is like, it's sealed over the cover. That's nice. Cool. So here's, here's another sticker. Once again, with like that, you know, the artwork from the game in the background. So we've got the box art again on the front, same finish and everything. So here's Gaiac, Geek, a Drakkar, and oh, sweet. And this must be like the lone wolf or the main character of the game. Joe Denver. Is that Joe Denver? Or is this his lone wolf? Does this belong to him? Time to find the little tear tab. Oh, that's cool. You guys even, I don't even need to use a tear tab. You just have it like sealed differently on the side. So much better than American boxes nice matte finish on the box too oh and this game is rated higher let's see it's rated six p peggy 16 for violence woof one might say so then the game it's not sealed on the inside then as well uh so let's see so lone wolf is back as a video game with a brand new story a deep combat system stunning graphics and much more Make meaningful choices and carve your own path through this epic non-linear adventure. Test your strength in dynamic turn-based battles, prove your skill with the lock-picking minigame, and accept the challenge of wits posed by the mysterious Shinati Cube. Okay. So on the inside here, we've got the game, which still like, the games always have really nice art too. Good job. And we've got a little book here. The inside too shows the wolf. I'm, I'm just gonna assume that is the wolf. But yeah, so we've got a little manual in here again. Kind of has some Witcher vibes going on there. And this seems like it has more like artwork and stuff in here than, you know, like strategy for the game. But that's still really cool just to even get that. It's always nice opening a box and seeing not just a blank white slate, cause that's, that's boring. Why would you, it can't cost that much more to print something on the inside, can it? You break in the bank, Bandai Namco. So next we have the Faerun, yeah, Faerun Collection. This one I think I was looking at cause I think it's developed by the people who made, it was in our best games to play after you've beaten Breath of the Wild list. Kamiko, I think it's called. It's like a little Zelda-like little 2D hack and slash arcade style game. That was really cool. I think this is made by those same people. So here we have another sticker. So we've got the one that shows off the game. We have the sunset cage. So it looks like an area in the game. The four fairies. And oh, sweet. And the artwork for the box. This one's, this is so pretty. It's so, so genuine, genuinely nice. And then so the game's all wrapped up like, you know, like you'd expect. This is a Peggy 3 rating, so there's not even like a rating thing on the back. Is that what the other Peggy 3s? Oh, I don't have any Peggy 3s. Are Peggy 3s just like straight clean? Oh, so this collection has four games in one. So it has Faerun, Faerun 2, Faerun Origin, and Faerun Blast. Oh no, UK, I spoke too soon. I can't open your box. Oh, mm. there we go. This box art, 
is beautiful for Faerun. So we've got, there's the manual and the game and the, the back of the box art shows it looks like I'm not sure if those are characters, fairies, monsters, what, but it's pretty. Oh, sweet. Okay, so this one is a real manual. So it has a table of contents in the beginning here too for all of the different games. I like that they don't always stick to, an oh, there's a shmup in here. That's awesome. I, uh, I like that they don't always stick to like one particular formula with these games either. Like it seems like they are either leaving it up to the devs or maybe Super Air gets to decide like what goes into that booklet. I mean, obviously the trading cards and the stickers are all very similar, but if, you know, like Lone Wolf decided they wanted to put artwork in there instead where Faerun did want a manual, it's nice that they, uh, that they left that choice open. This holds the cards really nicely too. And I don't feel bad about like putting pressure on the cards either. This is a very like minute collector gripe is sometimes when boxes like DS boxes are infamous for doing it. The Pokemon boxes will always stuff like a million manuals in here. And then there's so many in here that when you put your manual back in, it's like crushing and damaging the manual. You don't have to worry about that. This with like putting the trading cards back in, it's cause you can put that sticker there and there's a little, little, little bit of paper there that's protecting them. And the last one we have to show off looks like is Earthlock. And I ripped it on the first go. Now this game I actually noticed is sold out, but you can actually go on Super Rare's website right now and you can sign up for their wait list. So in case if they have like cancellations or they get like extra games or whatever, you can be put on a wait list to be notified if they're going to have extras of this game. So we've got the sticker here. Um, we've got the trading cards. And this game, if memory serves me correct, is a turn-based RPG, like something you would see on like the PS1 or like Super Nintendo. First card still, remember, shows the, the box art. Meow, 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 we'll go past that one. Oh, I got number one now. So there are number one cards. So Amen, Baros, Ivory, Lavender, and then Gnart, Tigger, Moth. He looks pretty cool. So I'm really hoping that this one has a really big manual. Oh, the box art's so cool. It's well done. I like it. Ooh, cool. Nice. So there's even, um, the inside actually has uh, reversible cover art. So you can flip that around if you don't want to display, you know, the art with, uh, with all the logos and stuff, which I wish the spine was the same. Or actually, I really just wish that Nintendo Switch games didn't have all red spines because they look kind of like garbage on the shelf. We have the cartridge here. Looks pretty simple, just has the logo. But the manual is framed up like a GBA manual or like an NES manual is even a little bit bigger than this, but, and then this one is an actual manual. I don't know what's up with this frog boy. He was on the sticker. Oh, and he's on the front of the box too. I bet there must be a card for frog boy. Dang it. So yep, so it looks like it talks about all the different controls. This is so nice. I remember when I was playing Final Fantasy 15 on PS4, I needed to do something and I didn't know how to do it. I there was like no online manual for that. There was no manual built into the game. There's no manual in the box. And with RPGs, they're huge games. So it's really nice to have something like this to reference. And it looks like they put a lot of time into this as well. It looks good. And they gave me a little card in here that says, thank you for all your support. That's nice. You can follow Super Rare Games at Super Rare Games on Twitter and on Instagram. Now, like I said before, unfortunately, none of these games are available currently on Super Rare Games' site as all of the games and their standard nature are available for a limited amount of time. Now, like I was saying with Earthlock though, you can go on their website and you can sign up for their wait list and you might still be able to snag one. But if you pay attention to Super Rare's website or follow them on Facebook or Twitter, we also like to post about their games on Nintendo Life. You'll be able to find out when these games are available for you to pre-order so that way you don't miss out on them. I remember Snake Pass came out, I think that one was about a year ago on Switch and I loved that game. I was very terrible at it and didn't make it very far, but the music was composed by David Weiss. That game got released physically with Super Rare and is very expensive now. Typically their games, I think US dollars are around like 30-ish dollars. You might have to calculate shipping into that being a little more as well, being in the US here, but they're around 30 bucks and Snake Pass is now like a hundred dollar game. But now I'm definitely going to be keeping a close eye because now seeing how much more expensive these games are on the secondary market after they release, if anything pops up that I'm interested in, I'm definitely gonna be picking it up while I can versus paying, you know, the prices to scalpers and other people online. The game they currently have available for pre-order on their site is called Wolverblade, and it'll be available for, I think, another day or two at the time of me making this video. So, I mean, by the time you see this, it might already be sold out. But, like I said, they make a game about once a month, so feel free to check back to their site or follow them on Twitter and Instagram to be able to see whenever they release new stuff. 
Feel free to let us know in the comments down below what sort of titles you'd like to see Super Rare Games publish next. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you pre-order that like button before it goes up in price on the secondary market, subscribe to Nintendo Life, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we release new videos. Thank you so much to Super Rare Games for sending these over to us, and thank you all so much for watching. I'm ZM from Nintendo Life, and we'll see you next time. Oh,